seconds left of this moment. But I didn't come to play no games with the devil today. I don't know about anybody else, but I came to give God glory today. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what kind of day is going to happen. But one thing I know for sure, it's going to be an I will bless the Lord kind of day. <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to today. Let your neighbor know, say, on this road right here, this is a hand-waving road. This is a foot-stomping road. This is a hallelujah road. For 30 seconds, can you just open up your mouth and give Jesus a shout of praise? Go to E-flat, Jehovah is your name. Can we just lift up our hands before we receive communion? We just want to set the atmosphere. Can everybody just give Jesus your worship? Come on, open up your mouth today. Come on, everybody, just open up your mouth this morning. Every heart, those of you that are watching this morning, we don't want to leave you out. You're a part of this experience. Come on, have an encounter with God in your house, in your car, on your cell phone, on your, your iPad, your computer. Come on, everybody, let's just worship Jesus. Jehovah is, praise it, y'all. Your name. Everybody, let's lift our praise. Say Jehovah. Come on. Jehovah your, name. your name. Everybody say mighty warrior. Say it. Mighty warrior. Great in battle. In battle. Jehovah is your name. One more time, let's raise it up. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Come on, let's raise it as a family. Y'all, everybody say it. Jehovah is your name. He's mighty, 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 mighty. Say it.
would you celebrate our Savior for his sacrifice that while we were yet sinners he died for us as our music ministry continues to lead us in worship would you take a moment for introspection just to reevaluate your life to consider what are the things that you need to change in November what it is that you need to beg God's forgiveness for for October, knowing that every time you come to the communion table, God has given you an opportunity to press the refresh button. This is not the moment for you to turn to your neighbor. It's the time for you to turn within and really recalibrate. How can I be a better Christian in November? How can I live a life that is pleasing unto God? How can God consecrate every fiber of my being that I yield back to him my thoughts, my words, and my deeds? Never 
lose. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. mindful that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You ought to be overwhelmingly grateful that this is our 11th time this year afforded the benefit and the blessing of celebrating sacred communion. We are thankful for a savior that died for you. Would you give God glory for that now? And on the night that he was betrayed, he commandeered all of the disciples into a small hovel of a room. And he pulled out a loaf of bread. He extended it in front of all of them. And he broke it. He said, this is my body that is broken for you. Would you open up the first level of your receptacle? Take that wafer out if you'll lift it above your head. And right in your hands, would you just break it in your hand? That's what the enemy thought he was going to do to you in October. Thought he was going to break you. Thought you were going to crack. Thought that you were not going to keep it together. But the hand of God is resolutely on your life. And because of his sacrifice, we still remain. Would you please take an eat? ever so carefully pulling back the second level of your receptacle. Jesus, in the presence of the disciples, pulled out a flask of wine. He lifted it up and he said, this is my blood. It is shed for you. I want you to know that alcoholism controls substances. ODs move and shift to a spike from November until January 15th. People who are trying to escape from their trouble, from their trauma, from their issues and from their pain. But I wanna to say to every person who is connected to us today, that what's in your hand is the only drink you gonna need. What can wipe away your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Theologians coined the expression transubstantiation. Transubstantiation suggests everything that's in the blood is now in this cup. And I believe it for you. I believe it for your family. I believe it for your health. For the blood that was shed for sinners like you and me. Will you please take and drink? The disciple said, Master, we got some difficult days ahead. In the moments that we can't feel you, that we can't see you, how ought we pray? It is in that moment that he taught them the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father. Amen. Would you hug three people you don't know and tell them a new season is coming, a new season. serve before you as your elders over the litany for today. So as soon as they place it up on the screens, we'll begin. We'll, I'll read the leader portion, you'll read the people portion, and we will complete the people portion together. Would you please stand for the reading of the litany? I am a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Ghost power. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back up, or be still. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plaudits, or popularity. I do not have to be right, first, tops, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I now live by faith. Lean on the Lord, run with patience, lift by prayer, and labor by the Holy Ghost power. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the adversary, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, let up, until I have stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, worked up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go till he comes, give till I drop, teach all I know and work till he stops me. And when Jesus comes, he will have no problem recognizing me because he'll remember I was the one he gave power to. Walk in your power and authority in Jesus' name. Amen, let us pray. Father, we're grateful, Lord. We come before you thankful, Lord God. We come before you with confidence, Lord God. And we're excited about this day, Lord God. Thank you for your power that you've put inside of us, Lord God. And Father God, we lift your name on high, Lord God, and we just celebrate you on this Sunday morning, the first Sunday in November, Lord. We thank you for 11 months, Father God, that we've seen, Father God, and we're grateful for it, Father. We're grateful for the peace, the joy. We're thankful for the love that you've put inside our bodies, Father God. We thank you that you've covered our homes, Lord God. You've covered our children, our families, Lord God, and we thank you that you've covered our communities and our cities, Lord God. By your blood, we thank you and we honor you for it, Lord God. Your blood that has shielded us, Lord God, that has covered us, that has 
kept us, Father God, that has kept it out of the directions of ways that we shouldn't have gone, Lord God. You've pulled us back into the right vein and the right will that you have for us, Father God. And for that, we say thank you, Lord God. Now, Lord God, we thank you for our church family, Father God. Thank you for every member, Father God, physical present, Lord God, and even those streaming online right now, Lord God. Thank you for wherever they are, Lord God. You are there, Father God. You are there in the midst, in their hearts, in our minds, in our body, in our spirit, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that we are empowered, we are strengthened, and we are evoked, Lord God, to do the best that we can for your kingdom, Lord God. We are your hands, Lord God. We are your feet, Father God. We wear the mind of Christ, Father God, and we walk in your truth this day, Lord God. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are in this place, Father God. You are ever-present, Lord God, and King of glory, we say, come in, Father God. King of glory, have your way, Lord God. King of glory, be glorified this day. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, Father God, in this place. Now, God, we lift up our pastor, Lord God, Dr. Jamal Bryan. We thank you for his hands, his mouth, Lord God, his feet, Lord God. Thank you that you cover and anointed his head with oil, Father God. We thank you that you're the anointing, Father God. It runs down his beard into his body, Lord God, and amongst us, Lord God, your people, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, that you've entrusted him, Father God, for this hour, for this time, Lord. And we bless you for his family, Father God. We thank you that you're nurturing and caring for them right now, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that the peace that surpasses all understanding, that it guards their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. And now, God, we lift you and magnify you, Father. And we say thank you and we say hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. I am here to just welcome everyone this morning with a time that we call Pass the Peace. So we're going to give a little bit of instruction. This morning I want everyone to definitely hug some folks, maybe three. November 3rd, three is the Trinity. And we're going to do our ussies. But we definitely want to welcome our virtual guests, our virtual streamers, our virtual family members. And you can work and do the virtual ussies as well. So what I would like for you to do is to go ahead and take a selfie of yourself streaming the service today. Your ussie will be multitudes. Our ussies will maybe be two or three. So with that being said, let's pass to piece three and get those ussies and hashtag them to hashtag new birth now. Thank you. He's intentional, never failing, all things are working for my good. He's intentional, he's intentional, never failing, never failing. Oh, oh, oh. I don't have to worry cause it's working for me, yeah, it's working for me, it's working for me. Everybody lifting up say Bless the Lord. If you believe it's working for you, come on, give God some praise. You may be seated. Would you smile with all the teeth you got left? Come on, smile. Act like you're happy to be here. Act like you're happy to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you were excited to come to church today? How many of you know one of the signs that God loves you is he gave you an extra hour to sleep today? That was just a sign how much God loves you. Uh, New Birth, I can't tell you how proud of you I am and how proud we ought to be. Last night, uh, New Birth, we were recognized by the NAACP as the Church of the Year. Uh, come, come on, come on. Y'all ought to celebrate it.
NAACP thanks New Birth for providing ethical, moral, and religious values, guidance, and services to the community and making a difference outside of the sanctuary. I want you to celebrate. Come on, come on. Let the works we've done speak for us. I'm just amazed at how God has unwaveringly, unapologetically blessed our church this year, 2019. New Birth, you ought to be clapping your hands that you were able to rescue Bennett College this year. Come on, give God some praise. That for two weeks you were able to feed furlough workers. Come on, give God praise that you were able to bail out nonviolent offenders. Come on. You were able to provide 5,000 pairs of shoes to young people in this community. You were able to feed those in housing projects over spring break. Would you give God thanksgiving for all that he has done? Just on last week, we were able to give access to young people in this community uh, access to $41 million worth of college scholarships. And y'all not excited about it? Come on, come on. Whenever somebody talks about what churches are not doing, don't get offended, don't fight, don't argue, because clearly they're not talking about new birth. When you know your church is representing the kingdom of God in the earth, I need you to celebrate God right now. Celebrate them. None of that even entails what it is that we were able to do for the Bahamas after Hurricane Dorian. I hope that you are excited uh, to know that we have extended over to the Bahamas over $200,000. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Uh, we sent four cargo planes over to uh, the island to be able to be a relief and support uh, for those who found themselves victimized by uh, natural disaster. And we're grateful under God that God would equip us to do it. Uh, November is a significant season. Why? Uh, because agriculturally, this is the time of harvest. It is the time of harvest. This is the time that everything that you have sowed begins to reveal itself. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Everything that you have planted begins to blossom. I need somebody to shout out loud, it's harvest time. It's that this is the season I'm going to be able to reap because I did not faint. I don't know how many of you had a rough year, a trying year, a challenging year, but how many of you believe in this month God is going to give back to you everything that you poured out, everything that you invested, everything that you sold, everything you gave, it's getting ready to come back to you. 20, 40, 60, 80, a hundredfold blessing is coming to hit your life. We've got ample evidence, ample evidence as we look around our sanctuary to see how God has popped up around us living testimonies that we have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Look at the person next to you, tell them it got tight for me. Look at him, tell him he got tight for me, but I still ate every day. I had some difficult days, but there was still a roof over my head. I had to struggle a little bit, but my children were taken care of. This is the sound and the sign of those who know by first-hand account that it pays to serve Jesus. Y'all don't believe that? I said it pays to serve Jesus. I want us collectively, because we have modeled and exercised our faith out loud. I'm telling you, who couldn't serve a God like our God? On one Sunday, we challenge you to 
raised $500,000 on one Sunday. And by the grace of God, we were able to close in at $780,000. Oh, come on, somebody ought to be shouting about that. To God is all the glory due, and we give it over to him. To that end, there ought not be a rough pull. There shouldn't be a heavy negotiation. It shouldn't be the lost episode of let's make a deal. Every time you have an opportunity to give, when you have seen firsthand what God has afforded your church to do over the course of this year, you ought to be zealous to give. You ought to be excited to give. You should be tackling the ushers trying to get past them. Give me my envelope. I got to give something to God uh, just to let them know how grateful it is that I am. I'm going to challenge you. We're going to finish this year strong. I'm going to challenge every single, single one of you to secure an envelope in your possession. Those of you who are part of our streaming family, we're thankful unto God for you. We're appreciative. Uh, last week, I was uh, invited to go to Facebook headquarters in California uh, because New Birth is one of the lead viewers, streamers on all of Facebook as a religious influencer. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise. They sat down with uh, your pastor and 15 other social media influencers on how it is that they can better optimize their partnership with the faith community. And I wanted them to know that we are one week away, one year away today, a year from now today, we getting a new president of the United States. Are y'all ain't happy about that? A year today, we've made a commitment new birth that we're going to register 2,000 new voters to go to the polls in the presidential election. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. This coming Tuesday is uh, elections. I ask that all of you would be mindful that all politics is local. Uh, if you have not registered to vote, uh, please, I need you to do all that you can. We've got some great people who we want to push, who we want to influence, uh, who we want to strengthen their hands so that they can be our voices in the high places. I, I want you to please get that seed in your hand. Why? Because you believe in the vision of this house. Because you see God's hand moving in this house. Because you're sitting alongside people on your own who are testimonies about what the favor of God can do. Some of you all don't know it, but a few people in the room understand that sometimes favor is better than finance. I can't hear nobody that even when I didn't have the finances, my favor kicked in. We are a tithing church, and because we're a tithing church, we give what percent of our income to God? Come on, talk back to me, what percent? Last week, you earned, you raised, you were given $1,000. How much are you giving in church today? Come on, come on. How much are you giving? Bless the Lord. Can a man rob God? Yes, at other churches, but not at new birth. Amen, because we are accountable to what it is that God has given to us. Uh, if, in fact, you want to give electronically, you can partner with us. Uh, through your debit card, you can give through Giblify, text to give, uh, PayPal, you can... I don't know. No, that ain't PayPal. What is that? Push to pay. Yes. Please don't give on PayPal. I don't know where that money is going. Uh, amen. Uh, push pay uh, as well as you can give on Givelify or on our secure website at newbirth.org. I've given you enough and ample time uh, to be able to write your check for a million dollars. I know you were trying to steady your hand. Uh, amen. Don't write that check if it ain't going to clear now. Amen. Uh, but I, I, I want you to please give on this day. Albert Einstein said that the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. How many of you want something different from God in November than what you got in October? Well, if you want something different, you're going to have to do something different. So you ought to be in competition with yourself that you are giving more in November than you gave in October. Lift up that gift above your head. Repeat after me, Lord, thank you for what you did last year. 
for what you did last month, for what you did last week, for what you did yesterday. But the seed in my hand is an expectation for what you're going to do before Thanksgiving gets here. Amen. Bless the Lord. Our ushers are going to serve you. Uh, after they would have passed your role, if you'd like to sow your seed for yourself, as is the culture of our church, you're able to do that after they would have passed your role. Ask that you would give your attention to our screens for our morning announcements. Those of you that are viewing around the world, ask that you will partner with us. I want to thank those of you who are part of our cyber family, those of you who are part of our online community, those of you who are our virtual worshipers. Ask that you would please, please, please uh, get your gift and ask that you would give no matter where it is that you're viewing from. Give your attention to the screen for the morning announcements. And now, New Birth, it's time for your video announcements. We're collecting new and gently used winter coats for our homeless population. Please begin bringing coats and place them in the bins around the church beginning Sunday, October 27th through November 17th. And you don't want to miss it. Sunday, November 10th, it's Throwback Sunday. Join us for our worship at 9.30 a.m. as we celebrate the old school church with our special musical guests, the incomparable Dottie Peoples. And Tuesday, November 12th, is Throwback Tuesday, where our guest speaker will be Tellus Chapman. And for the month of November, you don't want to miss the powerful new series from Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. Don't get it twisted. Ministry for the misunderstood. And don't forget to pick up your copy of the November Book of the Month, Judged, The Value of Being Misunderstood. Stop by the Call to Conquer bookstore today. Also at the Call to Conquer bookstore, it's Imaginarium. Haven't gotten your copy yet? Well, stop by and get it today. But that's not all. Bishop William Murphy and the Dream Center will join us for a special Thanksgiving service Tuesday, November 26, 7.30 p.m. Don't miss it. Join us for our Kwanzaa Plaza. Plaza Expo, November 29th through December 1st in our Family Life Center. This is your opportunity to circulate dollars within the black community while empowering everyone to shop locally. Please visit newbirth.org to register as a vendor. That's all this time, New Birth. Bless the Lord. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. For every gift and... Uh, for every giver. I ask that you would please keep the family of uh, Brother Micah Stampley in prayer. Uh, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, he served uh, uh, as leading us in praise and worship, and then within 48 hours, his daughter transitioned, uh, went on to be with the Lord after having a seizure in her sleep. I uh, ask that you would please pray for that family. That homegoing celebration is tomorrow at uh, Bishop Dale Bronner's church. I uh, ask that you would please keep them lifted and uh, keep them uh, covered. I I've got to do this. Those of you who are celebrating birthdays in November, would you stand? You're celebrating a birthday. <laughs> ask that you'll remain standing for just one moment. Uh, November is uh, a special uh, month for me. Uh, it's both my sister uh, and uh, my daughter Grace's birthday on the same day tomorrow. Uh, and all of these wonderful people who are standing, uh, we are excited about your future. I can't get to all of you, but, but new birth, if there's somebody standing near you, uh, would you em embrace them and tell them better is coming? Embrace them, tell them better. Bless the Lord. I, I am uh, excited. I am uh, uh, excited uh, that this coming Saturday is uh, popcorn with the pastor. This coming Saturday is popcorn with the pastor. Uh, we're taking over the movie theater on uh, Saturday uh, to go see an incredible movie uh, about Harriet Tubman. Uh, those of you who have not heard about it, it just came out uh, on Friday. Uh, Media Minister, can we run that clip now uh, of that film, if you'll help me, please? With my face turned to the sun. 
many of you don't know slavery firsthand. But I remember. I've heard their groans. Seen their tears. We can't just wait for war. I'm Harriet Tubman. And I would give every last drop of blood in my veins to free him. When trouble comes, you'll be ready. So I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Go wherever I gotta go. Until this monster called slavery is dead. Liberty or death. I want all of you that can and will, uh, we've got uh, tickets available immediately after service in our Call to Conquer bookstore, uh, as well as uh, uh, with the OP, we'll call the vestibule. Amen. Amen. The new generation say it's in the lobby. Amen. Uh, so I ask that you will please secure tickets, but we want New Birth to roll in the theater strong uh, on Saturday at 2 o'clock. It's going to be absolutely uh, amazing. Uh, our music ministry is coming to prepare our hearts, our minds, and our spirits uh, for the Word of God. Would you take one moment? Your phone is already on. Uh, would you please go to that phone for just one moment? I want you to invite somebody uh, to come and worship with us. Uh, today. We're streaming live at newbirth.org uh, or they can find us on our Facebook page, New Birth Atlanta. There's somebody you know who needs this word, uh, needs this word. I I'm beginning a new series today called Don't Get It Twisted, Ministry for People Who Have Been Misunderstood. Has anybody in the room ever been misunderstood? Anybody in the room ever been misunderstood? I'm telling you, this month is going to be riveting. It's going to be compelling. It's going to be life-changing. On Tuesday, I want you to join me and be a part of what God is doing. Uh, I am going to be teaching uh, all month long in November about scriptures that we've been quoting wrong. <laughs> it got quiet. That's, scriptures we have quoted wrong and scriptures that don't mean what we think they mean. So I need you to come. I need you to come uh, on uh, Tuesday at 7.30. I I'm telling you, your, your mind is going to expand. Uh, your heart is going to be healed in so many areas. I'm telling you, biasly, of course, uh, New Birth has the best Bible study of anybody on the planet. I want to thank all of our volunteers, all of our workers, all of our staff uh, who participated on Tuesday for our Harvest Festival. Our Harvest Festival was absolutely amazing. I hope you'll clap with me that we brought in from the community. 2,000 young people were here on our campus on Tuesday. We're thankful and uh, we are grateful. Would you invite somebody, update your social media page, let people know where it is that you are, drop your location that you are uh, sitting in the sanctuary of New Birth. Whoever were the last three people who text you, text them back. Please don't bother me. I'm in church right now. <laughs> and you can watch the word right now at newbirth.org. We're excited about what God is going to do. If you believe that God is going to speak to you today, give God a hand clap of praise now.
Y'all don't love him, come on! Bless the Lord, you may be seated. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Bless the Lord. Come on, you might as well shout it out.
Come on, just make one shout. Just give him one shout. Come on, everybody. Love me. Come on, everybody. Why don't you look at your neighbor? Lift your voice and say, let me tell you why. Tell them, tell them. Let me tell you why. Clap your hands. You may be seated for just one moment. Give me just a little bit more, Eric. Thank you. You may be seated. En route to our election day on uh, Tuesday. Uh, en route to election day on Tuesday. I wanted to pause and take a point of personal privilege just to uh, express uh, my appreciation for our mayor being here today. Uh, mayor Jason Leary, Mayor of Stonecrest, won't you please stand? Give God a hand clap of praise for him. Elder Barbara Hall, where are you? Elder Barbara Hall, where are you? are you? She's a member of New Birth. She's running for Stonecrest City Council. Come on, give God some praise for her. Sister Cindy Thomas, where are you? Sister Cindy Thomas, won't you please stand? She's running for mayor of Lithonia. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for her. Dr. Diane Adomo, where are you? Dr. Diane, she's running also for mayor of Stonecrest. Give God a hand clap of praise for her. And now would you clap your hands for Jesus who's running to be king of kings. He's Lord of Lord. He don't need no election. I, I want to challenge you, as you very well know, we believe and subscribe here at our church uh, that readers are leaders. Uh, to that end, uh, we have a book every month that we read collectively as a church. Uh, I'm going to challenge you to get this book judged, The Value of Being Misunderstood the value of being misunderstood. Uh, our Call to Conquer bookstore has it uh, in stock today. I ask that you will please, please uh, uh, pick it up. Uh, would you help me thank God for the chair of our board, Brother Tommy Dorch is here today. Give God a hand clap of praise for him. Secure your Bibles. Go with me to Genesis chapter 18. We have some gifted people in our church. I ask that you'll stand, some gifted people. Our own brother Palmer Williams Jr. has written, produced, direct, directed, and is starring in his own comedy stage play entitled For the Love Of. It's gonna be held at the Porter Sanford Performing Arts Center. Our tickets are in the bookstore. I ask that you will please support our very own. We're excited about the doors that God is opening for members of our church uh, and you ought to support them because when God opens your door you're going to want somebody to support you. Amen. Our vendors, if you've not already done so, we need you to please register for our Kwanzaa Festival. Uh, we are transforming our Samson's Gym into a 100% black run shopping mall. 
Uh, it's going to be uh, filled with uh, minority vendors uh, for Thanksgiving weekend, uh, and vendors are coming in literally from across the state of uh, Georgia, and so we want to make sure that our own are a part of it. Uh, friends, uh, family, you've got uh, relatives that are coming in for the holidays. Please don't take them to Linux. Please don't take them to Perimeter. Uh, amen. Don't take them to Phipps. Bring them right to our Kwanzaa Plaza. Uh, that Thanksgiving weekend, we're going to be open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, we've got to start circulating our dollars in our community. Somebody say amen. All of the black entrepreneurs shout hallelujah. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Choir, y'all are off the hook today. Thank you. Y'all are, are doing the doggone thing. Uh, Genesis chapter 18. I want to uh, highlight, if I can, verses 12 through 15. Genesis 18, verses 12 through 15. Lord, speak in this place. Talk to us. We yearn to hear your voice. Change something. Heal something. Kill something. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Genesis 18, verses 12 through 15. So Sarah laughed to herself. As she thought after, I am worn out and my husband is old. Can I still have pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for God? I need you to look at the person beside you and ask them that question. Is anything too hard for God? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. You may be seated. Beginning our new series today that I'm going to be preaching on throughout the entire month of November. Uh, don't go, get it twisted about being misunderstood. In Genesis 8, verse number 12, Sarah laughed to herself because she didn't think at this stage in her life she would still have pleasure. The Lord wanted to know, what you laughing for? <laughs> Sarah said, no, nah, I, I ain't laugh. And the Lord said to her, stop lying. <laughs> I heard you. You did laugh. I want to preach for a little while this morning using as a subject, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be funny. Recently, in the midst of my travels, I slipped into an empty theater to cast a glance at one of the most discussed films of this year, The Joker. It serves as a mythical, historic prequel on the background of Batman's arch rival. For all intents and purposes, it was an expose on the mental health crisis in America and how society woefully underserves those who are psychologically overwhelmed. However, there are layers of trauma that went grossly unaddressed in this cinematic presentation from being raised by a mother who suffered from gross delusions, of navigating being an infant who is abstracted from his home due to endangerment, of never being told that he was adopted until 
he was 30. Being misled about his paternal lineage. Imagining relationships that never existed. His medication was eliminated and counseling was no longer offered. Strangely, with a twist of irony, the only job that he seemed to qualify for was that of being a clown. Derided by colleagues who were in the same craft, extended no sympathy from his supervisor, and beaten by bullies in the street. His only comfort came from holding a gun. And all of this from the experience of a white male who otherwise would be extended privilege. How much greater is the burden for black people who have psychological trauma when only 11% of us have access to medical insurance? Only one out of three get the care that they are needed in the area of mental health. The melanated in America who suffer from schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and PTSD are more likely to be incarcerated than to be cared for. Not to mention the surge in disproportionate autism found in our children connected clearly to shots of vaccination. The stigma, stigma assigned to them in sanctuaries, schools, and families, giving them further alienation where nowhere can they find comfort or a circle of safety. Laughing at them, talking about them, running away from them is both inhumane and unchristian. <laughs> Romans 12 and 2 reminds us we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. The Lord arrested me this week. Those of you who have a family member who is suffering from psychological trauma, whether that's schizophrenia, bipolar, chronic depression, or PTSD, would you just lift that hand right where it is that you sit? Or even if it's you yourself who are contending with those issues. For every person with lifted hands, even those of you who are streaming virtually, I plead the blood over your family members who are being stalked with mental distress. I declare and decree that every resource that is needed for their balance and for their mental equilibrium will be released into their life. I declare and decree over every lifted hand that serves proxy for a family member who is battling for their sanity, that the grace and the peace of God will visit them before this month comes to a conclusion. And those of you who share that level of faith and believe, here it is, that God is a mind regulator, would you give God thanksgiving in advance? Come on, you can do better than that. I need you to clap because there's a burnout mother near you. There's a frustrated father near you. There is a disturbed wife near you. 
Would you give God praise for them? They need to know that they are in a sanctuary of support of people who are not idling them, judging them, or ostracizing them, but we stand in the gap with them, believing there is nothing too hard for our God. Early on in the film, before the Joker completes his precipitous fall, there's a scene of him on public transportation. Sitting in front of him is a black toddler with his mother. And the Joker is performing antics that keep the child engaged and entertained. The hardworking black mother who is obviously annoyed turns and tells him curtly, please cease all interaction with my child. At this, he burst out laughing hysterically, which further infuriates the mother. She asked him candidly, are you laughing? He then hands the mother a card that says, forgive my laughter. I have a condition. And on the back, it's printed, it's a medical condition, causing sudden, frequent, uncontrollable laughter that doesn't match how I feel. This can happen to people with a brain injury or certain neurological conditions. And people who really don't understand your pain have misappropriated your emotion. Just because I'm laughing don't mean stuff is funny. Sometimes I'm laughing because I'm frustrated. Sometimes I'm laughing because I'm trying not to cry. Sometimes I'm laughing so I don't cuss. Sometimes I'm laughing to give you time to correct your story. Sometimes I'm laughing to myself because you think I'm stupid. In the documentary, in the documentary entitled Beyond Laughter and Tears, A Journey of Hope, it chronicles those afflicted with pseudo-bulbar effect, also known as PBA. Pseudo-bulbar effect is resident in nearly two million citizens. It's exhibited by frequent involuntary bouts of laughing and crying. The Mayo Clinic advises the patients feel just like everybody else, but they express it in exaggerated or inappropriate ways. The laughter can sometimes turn into tears, and a novice may mistake it for depression. What people don't know, sometimes I'm not depressed, I'm just disgusted. And typically, when it is that you have those overarching feelings, you will self-isolate. Because I don't know when I'm going to cry. I don't know when I'm going to break down. I don't know how long I'm going to have to sit in this car. I don't know how many days I'm going to be wrestled and confined to this bed. Sometimes I got to shut down so I don't go off. I'm talking to some people who are in this room that feel like that sometimes. That there are some days where you can't find your happy place. Where you don't have the energy to pretend or to be phony. Where you can't go through the perfunctory casualties and just extend the gratitude that people want that you don't even have the energy to extend. I'm talking to some people who are just quiet because you were raised old school. If I ain't got nothing good to say, I ain't going to say nothing at all. So stop trying to make me talk. Please don't believe that every time you hear some laughter that is connected to comedy, there's such a thing as nervous laughter. Nervous laughter that can be generated from alarm, from embarrassment, from discomfort, from confusion. 
It's usually not so robust and it's infused with insecurity and it is often laced with awkward glances. There are occasions where you got to check your enemies. Oh, you think that's funny. There are people who are laughing at you because they think they got away with it. People who are laughing because they think that they got the upper hand. There are people who are laughing because they believe there's no way you're going to be able to survive. And they have no idea it is the grace of God that has covered you because there were moments and seasons of your life where you just wanted to be in the fetal position, where you wanted to suck your own thumb, where you wanted to cry uncontrollably. And people had no idea that I was so discombobulated, I didn't even want to be comforted. But I needed God to cover me because it was just the grace of God that didn't allow me to backslide into the thing that would have broken me. And I'm thankful that in spite of all of my depression, in spite of my alienation, I was not a lord to drugs or to alcohol or to violence. And please don't think because you see me sitting calm, it doesn't mean that there's not a roller coaster going on on the inside of me. And I got to talk myself off of the ledge because I'm wrestling between who I am and what I believe I'm called to be. Ladies and gentlemen, far from a vaudeville show and nowhere near the Apollo Theater, the Spirit of the Lord showed up in the presence of the patriarch who's known as Abraham. He's considered the father of the faith even while it is that he's sterile. Abraham is... Uh, is in a place where God doesn't seem to be answering his prayers, and yet God's got the nerve to visit him. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. He's in a place where his prayers are not being answered, and then God got the nerve to visit him. I speak over the life of people who are in this room and those who are connected through technology who have gone through a season where it looks like God is not answering your prayers. I believe by faith today that this week you are going to have a visit from the Holy Spirit. God is going to show up and commune with you. And I hope you're ready for it. It ain't going to happen at church. It's going to happen while you're at your house. I, I need you to brace yourself for the spirit of the living God to come to your home. The Holy Spirit right now is seeking to visit some people. It ain't the people who you think. The Holy Spirit ain't coming necessarily for those that are screaming the loudest. Those who are chanting the loudest, those who are running the fastest. But the presence of the Holy Spirit is searching out in this sanctuary. It's searching out those who are streaming, who have been miserable, who have been unhappy, who have been unfulfilled, who have been dissatisfied, who have been unsettled. The Holy Spirit now is getting ready to be dispatched from heaven to say now is the time for the Holy Spirit to come to you. Having the Holy Spirit don't mean you're going to dance. Having the Holy Spirit don't mean you're going to yell. But sometimes having the Holy Spirit is that which gives you perfect peace. When there's a storm on the inside of you that you cannot control and you cannot manage. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on somebody today. I don't know where you are, but I command the spirit of the living God, fall fresh. He is our comforter. Hallelujah. 
He is our comforter. He is our comforter. The Spirit of the Lord announced to Abraham as he is announcing to people who can hear my voice that next year, this time, the thing you thought you would never have is getting ready to show up in your life. Y'all can't hear me? I better announce it again. By November the 3rd, 2020, Everything you've been asking God to do is about to manifest in your life. Y'all still ain't heard me. In 365 days, I seen you struggle and toil and fight and wrestle. But next year, this time, it's going to be in your hand. Because I'm telling you, you're going to have it. I seen you frustrated. I seen you walking around, having to be your own life coach, having to talk yourself into it, having to motivate yourself when God ain't saying nothing and he ain't showing nothing. He said, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not please forgive me i ain't talking to everybody i'm just talking to those that are standing because you did not faint because you did not give up because you did not throw in the towel because you didn't walk away from god god said give me the next 12 months and watch me exceed your expectation and give you what you've been praying for. Says so you're gonna have that child Abraham a year from now. Forget the fact that your wife is 90 years old and never given birth. So she hadn't just been praying for it this year. She'd been praying for years, fasting for years, serving for years, nice for years, supporting others for years, and yet nothing is happening for her. God said, I watched you, and I wanted to see if you would remember that I always save the best for last. God, I can't hear nobody in here. You ain't got a reason to be jealous of nobody. Whatever God got for you is going to be given to you. What, whatever you ask for in his name, it shall be released. Don't forget at the time of the text that you were able to procreate as early as 14, the Virgin Mary gave birth to Jesus. She wasn't even 15 years of age. Your timing is off only because you are comparing yourself to other people's schedule. What God has for you is not predicated on when other people got it. There is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And I came to tell 80 of you, it is your time now. You didn't hear what I just said, I better say it again. It is your time now. Don't look at your neighbor, this ain't a word for your neighbor, this is for you. I want you to lay hands on yourself and shout out loud, it's my time now. It's my time to start that business. It's my time to get the house. It's my time to get married. It's my time to walk in my gift. It's my time to flow in the anointing. It's my time to lead. It's my time to be in charge. It's my time.
them now. And in verse 12 of Genesis 18, it records that Sarah was eavesdropping. The Lord wasn't even talking to her. He was talking to Abraham. I'm telling you, it don't pay to be nosy. That's a whole nother sermon. Whole nother book, whole nother series. Now you can look at your neighbor. Just tell them, mind your business. Sarah is eavesdropping when the angel of the presence of the Lord prophesies. And the Bible says in verse number 12, look at it, and she laughed to herself. She laughed to herself and pondered whether in her old age would she be able to have pleasure. I got to back that thing up. Is no children's church today, so I gotta be careful how I talk about this. <laughs> she wasn't laughing about whether she could have a child. This is Genesis 18. Ain't no Viagra, no Cialis. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. She's trying to figure out, can my husband still work it? Verse number 12, she doesn't say, is God able? She want to know, is Abraham able? Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. She's trying to figure out all this time, I've been having to do all the work myself. Y'all look straight ahead, I'm in the Bible. I've been with this same Negro dissatisfied. I ain't getting nothing out of it. He don't know how to please me. Y'all look straight ahead. Am I gonna get pleasure this time? 12 wives just gave me a high five in the spirit. I know you can't do it right because your husband. Just give it to me in the spirit. I got you. She said, now that the Lord is with them, now that the presence of God is with them, am I going to find pleasure? It wasn't a laughter birthed in hilarity, it was birthed in disparity. She was saying in no uncertain terms that only one person in your section can identify with, I got to laugh to stop from crying. Because I'm in a marriage, I'm in a relationship, I'm in a circle of friends that I get nothing out of. It got quiet right through here. And I'm sick of always being there for other people and nobody ever asked how I feel. God, I can't find nobody in here. Can I get pleasure? Some of y'all mad, some of y'all, I feel a tomato spirit being thrown at me right here. I get it, I ain't talking to y'all deep, super spiritual people, but sometimes I just wanna know, God, are you gonna ever let me be satisfied again? God, I can't hear nobody in here. This is just for 50 of y'all that ain't stuck up and you don't care what other people think, say, or how they roll their eyes. God said this is the year, not of cars, clothes, and money, but this is the year that you finally get satisfaction. That this is the year that finally somebody will have a mind to take care of you. This is the year that you finally gonna feel like a priority. This is the year that folk will stop everything they doing just to make sure that you're happy. 
I need you to look at your neighbor and tell them this will be the best year of your life. You ain't gonna have to sacrifice nothing. You ain't gonna have to give up nothing. You ain't gonna have to hide nothing. Everything that you are is coming to fruition. Thank you for letting me be myself again. In verse number 13, be seated, my time is almost up. Verse number 13, the Lord asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? That's what the Lord said in verse number 13. Media ministry, put that on the screen for me. Verse number 13, Genesis 18. The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Back that thing up. Go to verse number 12. Look at verse number 12. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought. Go to verse number 13. Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Y'all missed it? Climb back up into verse number 12. Sarah laughed to herself as she thought. Verse number 13, and the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? What is amazing, y'all, is that Sarah never laughed out loud. She just laughed in her head. Some of y'all ought to be shouting because God said the prayers I'm going to answer is the stuff you never talked about. But the stuff you had in your head is about to manifest. I need you to grab that neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I'm not trying to be funny, but in the next 12 months, if you ever see me laughing to myself, it's because I told the devil, I'm gonna have the last laugh. He meant it for evil, but God is gonna work it out for my good. If you believe that in 2020, you gonna be able to shout this joy that I have. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just can't keep it to myself. Grab that neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, no more stress. No more depression, no more anxiety. Congratulations, you just survived the worst season of your life and everything is getting better now. Everything is getting brighter now. Everything is gonna be happier now. Let everything that has breath praise him. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Give somebody a half high and tell them don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy, don't worry. Hallelujah. 
This is your happy season. I thought y'all would shout better than that. This is your happy season. If you'll indulge me for one moment, I wrestled with God over this message, over this sermon. I don't know where it is that you are. But if I can't feel safe in the sanctuary, where can I go? Those of you who have been battling with chronic depression, I want you to come meet me at this altar, please. Those of you that don't remember the last time you were happy, I want you to meet me at this altar, please. Those of you that have been flirting with the idea of suicide, I want you to meet me at this altar, please. Those of you who are on behavior modification prescription, I want you to meet me at this altar, please. The black church has got to disavow this notion that mental health is a taboo issue that we don't talk about. Standing at five foot three, James Baldwin said, you can't fix it until you face it. There's a language that has happened in charismatic churches. The language that we use inappropriately, I'm gonna deal with it on Tuesday. Is people talking about, I don't claim it. Well, God is saying, if you don't claim it, how am I going to get the glory when I handle it? I once was blind, but now I see. I want you to lay hands on your head, those of you who are at the altar. I'm going to say to you, and even if no other preacher has ever said it to you, softly musicians, I want to say it to, to you, would you look this way? You can have Jesus and a therapist. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Did y'all hear what I just said? You can have Jesus and a therapist. You can have the Holy Spirit, but I still want you to take your prescription. Y'all done got quiet right through here. I want you to lay your hands on your head. Satan, hear me, is the enemy of happiness. Y'all didn't hear me, I want to say it again. Satan is the enemy of happiness. He doesn't want to see you happy. I'm speaking over your life. I'm speaking to 300 of you who are streaming now, 42 of you who belong at this altar, but you're too shy to come. Forget about these people. I need you to get to this altar. So wasn't even supposed to be no shouting sermon. This is a surgery center. You don't even know that this altar is outpatient. God going to give you what you need and you're going to be able to go home afterwards. Come on, I see you coming. You're going to get stronger with every step you take. I was depressed the last two years of my life. I was depressed. Didn't know why. Couldn't figure out why. I'm telling you, I was depressed. Couldn't even function. Couldn't even really operate. And I want you to hear me. I was depressed with a growing church. I was depressed, watch this, with a television ministry. I was depressed with a thriving itinerary. I was depressed, hear me, with healthy kids. I was depressed, hear me. And I thought I was under attack and I didn't know that I was in transition. I 
Hear me. I need you to hear my heart. Hear me well. If I was happy, he couldn't have pulled me out of Baltimore. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. He said, I got to cut off everything you leaning on so you can trust me for the next chapter of your life. Sometimes what you are feeling is your transition for God to get you to where he needs you to be. But he's got to stop you from false codependency. So you can realize greater is he that is in me. Don't let these church people fool you. You can have the Holy Ghost and still be unhappy. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You, you can know your purpose, but can't find your passion. The grace of God has got to recalibrate your GPS. Why are you saying this to me? I'm saying it to you because God, who knows? letting you go through this emotional void and vacuum because he's getting you ready for what he's going to unleash in 2020. I just need you to do me a favor, New Birth. I need y'all to back me up. Just promise me you won't quit before December 31st. I thought y'all was going to shout better than that. Promise me you ain't going to give up on God. Because in the next 12 months, he's going to give you what it is that you need. He's going to confirm it. Lay hands on your head, please. New birth, stretch your right hand to faith. Those of you who are streaming and desirous to be in the flow of what God is doing at this altar, type your name on that screen, your child's name on that screen, your sibling's name on that screen. I pray for every person who's at this altar. And every person who's connected to this move of God. I pray that tonight while you sleep, God will perform open heart surgery. I pray that he'll start putting your heart back together again. I pray that God will put a force field around your mind and around your thinking, around your imagination, around your dreams, and around your thoughts. I pray that God today will release a restraining order to keep you away from toxic people. That people that bring negativity into your environment will no longer be able to get close to you. And those of you that know that you have survived some things that would have killed weaker people, I dare you right where you are, would you give God a shout of thanksgiving right there, right there. Y'all ain't shouting good. Listen to me. Our spiritual counselors, our spiritual counselors after church would have concluded, our spiritual counselors are going to be in the chapel. We want to pray with you. We want to stand with you. One of the weapons the enemy uses is the weapon of isolation to make you feel like you're in it by yourself. I want you to know you are in good company. Y'all don't believe it? Let me show you this. Every person in this room, every person in this room that is over 30, every person in this room that is over 30 has had two opportunities to have a nervous breakdown. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Everybody in here over 30 survived something. Here's your shout twice. That the hand of God was able to navigate you through. I want you to embrace somebody around you and tell them, guard your mind. Guard. Come on, guard your mind. God bless you. Peace. Everybody is standing. God bless you.
Everybody is standing. Everybody is standing. All of us who are in this room, all of us who are watching, have somebody in our family that has emotional challenges, has layers of psychological trauma, but the grace and the love of God that ought to be exhibited from us ought to be reflective of how it is that God has covered and protected all of us, even in our vulnerable moments. I want to open the doors of the church. I want to open the doors of the church. I want to give you an opportunity to become a part of a church that's not going to judge you, but it's going to love you. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. A part of a church that's not going to judge you, but it's going to love you. Wherever you are in this place, I want to tell you, please, no strings attached. I'm telling you straight up, I want to be your pastor. I'm telling you, I make no bones about it. I want New Birth to be your church. I'm telling you, I'm unapologetic. I want Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Wherever it is that you are, all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. The people who are standing in front of you, none of us are perfect, we're forgiven. And because we're forgiven, we're able to stand. Wherever it is that you find yourself today, say, Rev, you talking to me, Pastor, you don't even know, you done came down my street and kicked the door down. Wherever it is that you are, I want you to come meet me at this altar. Don't let nothing and nobody stop you till you meet me right here. Wherever it is that you are, I need you coming. New birth, would you clap your hands as they come? Listen to me. Even our friends who are viewing online, I need God to stir your heart. You're being fed here. I want this to be your church home. You're being ministered to here. I need this to be your ministry. I pray to the God of our salvation and I am believing for 40 of you to make this walk today. That's how my faith is set up. On the first Sunday of November, I am believing God for 40 of you to get out that aisle Walk down to this altar, saying, I yield, I yield. What must I do? Virtue has come out of me. The Spirit of God is amongst us. You're in this room. You're not saved. You don't have a church home. Thank you. Y'all gonna make me do all the work by myself. I got it. Come on, let's go to work. Roll up them sleeves. Let's go get them. They trying to play hard to get. Would you move from where you are? Go find two people you don't recognize. Find out if they're saved. Find out if they have a church home. Find out if they're giving their life over to God. I need you to come. I need y'all to shout for whole families coming. The Lord is gonna give you peace. Oh yeah. I can't stop till we get to 40. Come on. In your mind there will be peace. Your spirit there will be peace. There's somebody else I need you to come. New birth, here they come. Whatever the Lord y'all step up for me real quick please I don't want to embarrass you I want to empower you new birthday still coming
I'm believing God. I'm believing God. We're almost there. Just five more you got to get here. Here come two. Would y'all clap your hands for this beautiful family? My heart is doing somersaults right now. I'm waiting on three more. Come on, come on. You already know I'm talking to you. Don't act like that. My mother used to say, don't make me tell you again. <laughs> come on, clap your hands. Here they come. Y'all ought to shout for this family coming. Come on, peace. New birth, y'all see them coming in every aisle, and yet still you won't make noise under our God. Everybody in the room, everybody in the room. Here come a whole nother family. Everybody in the room, everybody in the room, would you look this way? Look this way, please. Clap your hands, here they come. God bless you. Everybody in the room, look this way. Every person online, if you'll look this way. I want you to now repeat after me. I'm not trying to be funny. Come on, repeat after me. I'm not trying to be funny. Now that was good practice. Look at the person beside you. Tell them I'm really trying, not trying to be funny. Look them in the eye. Say, are you sure you saved? Look them in the eye. Ask them, are you sure you got a church home? If they're not sure, would you bring them down to me, please? If they start stuttering, would you bring them to me real quick? Real quick, real quick. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Stretch your right hand to faith. Stretch your right hand to faith. Y'all, they came as friends, but they leaving as our family. Repeat after me, you're in the right place. At the right time. Joining the right church. Serving only God. And I know that's right. If you know I'm right about it, give God a hand clap of praise, please. Ask that you'll follow us out this way. New birth, would you clap your hands for those that are joining us online? I need you to be seated. I want to say something to the church. I want you to be seated. I want to say something to the church.